dealing with uh, some, of the, some of the high points in reference to his life. So in the last segment, I talked about the um, Hitler and his crazy mindset, and I really went into the Holocaust. And now in the segment, I'm going to basically talk about more of the fall of Adolf Hitler and the aftermath. All right. So it's nearing the end of the war. The uh, guards of the concentration camps are, are know it's near the end of the war. They know the time is near that everything's about to be over. So they have the bright idea of trying to eliminate the, the lasting Jews and trying to make the Holocaust seem like it was all a hoax. So basically what they would do is they would kill off the remaining Jews in the death camps or concentration camps or in the work camps. They would kill them off and they would try to tear down as much of the camp as they could. Like for instance, Auschwitz. They kill the remaining people there and they try to tear down Auschwitz as much as they could. But luckily they didn't t tear down the whole thing. So if you just so happen to find where it is, I mean, there are a few lasting bricks. But another fact about the Holocaust, some survivors who barely survived Auschwitz came back to the site where they were held captive you know over the years and they would take a brick from Auschwitz and just keep it as as memory and the gate that says Auschwitz um it can be found in the U.S. Holocaust Museum which I was fortunate enough to visit over the last couple of weeks I, I went there about two weeks ago and so in the I'm going to talk about the Holocaust Museum for a second in the museum it has a very intricate setup for instance, it has four floors, but you don't go, you know, you go one floor and you keep going up. You go to the fourth floor and you go down. So you get on this big elevator and they try to squish as many people in as they can and try to capture the essence or capture a, fra a fracture of the essence of how it would be in a, in a train car. And so this video shows up on on a screen in the elevator and it talks a little about the Holocaust but not very much because they don't want to give much away. So you ride up to the very fourth floor and in the fourth floor it just talks about the rise of Adolf Hitler, you know, his childhood and you know the beginning of the Holocaust. But when, um, but in a different section of the four, fourth floor, it gets deeper into the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. So after you leave the fourth floor, you walk through a staircase, or kind of like a little bridge, where if you look out of a window, you can see the lower floors. Mm -hmm. But a fun thing about it is, on the little glass panels of the museum, there are names of families that were involved in the Holocaust. So you'll see Horn and a lot of other names that were families of people who were killed in the Holocaust and they're all etched into the glass. So you walk across this bridge, you enter the third floor, which talks uh, more in depthly about the Holocaust. And they even have a uh, train car. And it's not even a replica, an actual train car that they had to have flown in and like dropped into the building and they had to build the building around it. And so you can see that train car and you walk through it where you can explore other divisions of the third floor. After that, you walk down a staircase and if you look out of a window by the staircase, it says, never forget, always remember. And so you see more of those bold state, bold yet simple statements around the Holocaust Museum. And um, like for instance, outside of the uh, Holocaust Museum, like on a door, or not on a door, but on, a, on kind of a wall, the etched in it says, you are my witnesses. And it's a passage, it's a little scripture from, I think, Isaiah in the Bible. And it says, you are my witnesses. And so that really means that we bear witness for the people who can no longer tell their stories. And it is our duty as people who are living after this has happened to tell our children and for them to tell their children so that the memory of this is never forgotten because there are people out there and there are websites out there that try to chalk the Holocaust as a hoax and you can find and you have to be really careful where you look up information about the Holocaust because you will find a lot of sites like that they'll say um Concentration camps never existed. The Holocaust never happened. Mm. It was all fabricated. It all was all a war tactic or something like that. And stuff that doesn't really make sense. And so we have to bear witness to these people. 
And so when you get done with the third floor, you go to the second one, and it has um, testimonials from people who happen to survive the Holocaust. Mm. And there's this one real popular testimonial about a woman who married the man who saved her, or a, a man from the army who came and, you know, rescued the people that were in her camp. And so after you take a walk around the first floor, you'll, oh, I forgot an essential part of the first floor, the shoes. It depends on what time of the year you go, but you will see shoes from the Holocaust. Mm. There are children's shoes, women's shoes, and you see a lot of heels and stuff, and it really shows that these people didn't know what they were getting into mm. because who would wear heels to go work in a, a, go die in a death camp? Mm. And so it really shows how these people were fabricated and lied to, only saying, oh, they would be going to work. And they just ended up being killed, and so um, they were just swept off the street by the uh, armies and by Hitler's armies and placed into the uh, Holocaust. Either that, or they were lied to, and the whole Holocaust was sugarcoated. And another thing about sugarcoating, when um, the uh, Red Cross would come and inspect the camps, they wouldn't wash them up beautifully. They would make it look like everyone was having fun. They would give. About a month prior to when the Red Cross would visit, they would give the, um, the workers food and lots of drink and stuff to kind of give them pounds because the life, sent, the life expectancy in a, holocaust, in a death camp or a concentration camp was 275 days. Mm -hmm. You aren't even going to make it a year. And that's because they didn't feed you, you, know, you barely bathed, you never had enough to drink, and you basically didn't have all the basic human necessities that we as people take for granted nowadays. And so they would clean them up. And so that's why a lot of the world during this period was lied to. Mm -hmm. And only until it was too late did we realize what was happening because either a lot of stuff wasn't broadcasted or only the good stuff was broadcasted and it would just be lies. When we would see people smiling and just skipping along, these people were grieving the death of their children who were just thrown into furnaces because they were marked incapable of work. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the world was really light too and that's why the people that so many people died because so many there were African Americans there, there were Slavs and Gypsies and uh, Jews mainly, and so anybody who didn't fit Hitler's criteria, and like I said in the last segment, the Aryan race, which isn't really a race, but that's what we say today, the Aryan race. If you weren't the Aryan race, you weren't coming out alive, but. There was another way that a lot of people did manage to survive. Well, not a lot, but a fraction of people did manage to survive the Holocaust. They would get on boats and sail to different countries. And there is a, a, a story that's not really a story, but a famous incident where people got these fake passports and they sailed from Germany to Cuba. And at first Cuba was going to let them in, but then Cuba changed their mind and did not let them in. So they sailed around the sea, not wanting to go back to Germany, and everyone on the boat perished. Mm -hmm. And so all these people, and, and unless you had connections in America, then you could get out if you got a fake passport, you know, you flew over there. And that's how a couple families mm -hmm. didn't manage to get out of the Holocaust. But besides that, it was a death sentence. There was no way you could escape Nazi Germany. And so in a real sense, Lana, you were able to get a real experience from uh, your visit to uh, the Holocaust uh, Museum, and, mm -hmm. and you would uh, advise and give, encourage everybody else to do the oh, same. Yeah. Is that what you'd say? And I forgot to mention the